So let's talk a little bit about nutrition. I'm going to go, um, I'm going to speed through some of this because I've got a lot of slides to show you and I want to leave some time for you to ask questions as well. So <clears throat> um, when I show you some of this nutrition research, I'm going to be skimming. So just bear, uh, bear with me. A lot of this is in my book, Sprouts the Miracle Food. Um, so you can find more resources there. So take a look at the alfalfa sprout versus head lettuce. That's protein. Now, lettuce is not a protein food. But when a non-protein food has four times the protein of other greens, that means that it also has to have high levels of vitamins, minerals, because you need those to produce protein. So take a look at uh, radish sprout versus the radish vegetable. The red line is the sprout. All right, so this first one is off the charts because um, uh, it's about 40 times more provitamin A than the mature organic radish vegetable. So that's what I was telling you before about that multiplication factor. So we're eating a concentrated food. And remember I was saying that in order to get the therapeutic dosage, you need to get food the concentrated. And so sprouts are inherently naturally concentrated. Comparing you know, lentil sprouts and pea sprouts even to a wonderful vegetable like kale, you still get better. And uh, the, the tallest bars are radish sprouts and alfalfa sprouts. And the others are some of our finest vegetables, broccoli, cabbage. And uh, here is um, protein and fat. You know, I, was, I mentioned before about digestion and how important digestion is. Um, but the big issue is when, when you're eating, a lot, like if we take a look at the chicken in the middle here, there's actually more fat, fat is the red line, there's more fat than there is protein. So when uh, your body has to digest the chicken, it has to get through the, all of that fat. And then it has to dismantle the protein, it has to disassemble the protein, because that protein was formed for a chicken's body. And we need a different arrangement of proteins. So we have to break the protein down First we have to get through the fat, then we have to break the protein down, then we have to reassemble the proteins. And for our bodies, why not just start with plant protein, which is already broken down into its amino acids parts, assemble it yourself. If you were to work with lentil sprouts, look how much look, fat is in lentil sprouts. And soy sprouts, which makes soy oil, so it is very fatty, but it's still way less than something like eggs or chicken. And you know, even in milk, it's equal in terms of fat and protein. So the plant protein is really the best way to get your protein. And a lot of this information is in my book and uh, in my sprout chart. Um, so here's where I'm going to start to skim. But what I want to say is that we, we should be concerned um, our, 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 our discussion of nutrition should concern itself with more than the alphabetical vitamins. So it's, this is more than vitamin B and vitamin A and vitamin C. Now we're talking about plant compounds, phytochemicals that exist in these wonderful vegetables and baby vegetables that actually are therapeutic and actually can turn around cancer and, uh, and turn around disease and lower cholesterol. And those are things uh, like uh, phytosterols uh, and uh, polyphenols and bioflavonoids and antioxidants and glucosinolates and isoflavones. These are the phytochemicals that we want to get from our food. This is the healing factors in our food. And the science shows it. So if you look at this research is on sprouts, all right? So if you look at the research on diabetes and on cancer prevention and on the protective uh, role against uh, stress and DNA damage 
and a chemo preventive again, uh, breast cancer cells. I mean, this is all uh, sprouts here. And if we look at, uh, you know, a year later, again, uh, we're looking at lowering cholesterol, anti-inflammatory, ulcer prevention, um, uh, skin cancer, um, all with, you know, wheatgrass and uh, the, uh, the brassica sprouts, which are kale and cabbage and broccoli, and um, detoxification, blood pressure, hypertension, again, liver cancer prevention, a big problem. Um, so, uh, you know, this is real university research, and it goes on and, and on. And this is the kind of thing that if we eat a diet rich in these foods, we are preventing disease. And that's why this stuff is so important. So, and, the, and some of what they, they do um, is, you know, the phytoestrogens in these plants are an alternative to estrogen uh, therapy, um, which decreases uh, the uh, bad cholesterol, increases the good cholesterol. Our anti-carcinogenic reduces um, the symptoms of menopause, increases bone density, prevents osteoporosis. Um, this is all coming from our food. This is where the best medicine is. And if you look at the sprouts, the soybean sprouts and the clover sprouts, big increase in soybeans. There's an increase of 4,200% from the, the bean to the sprout. So, and plants have saponins, saponins, uh, alfalfa sprouts, very high in saponins, clover very high in saponins. Saponins may sound like soap to you, and actually it has that detergent effect, only the detergent effect is in our arteries. So when you have fats accumulating in the artery, causing blockages, you know, that, think of that like greasy dishes in your sink. You know, water is not going to do the job. You've got to use a detergent. And then you cut right through that grease. Alfalfa sprouts, high in detergent, saponins. And that's why we have studies on alfalfa sprouts reducing uh, cholesterol. And again, 450% increase in the saponin content once you sprout it. That's why sprouting is the way to go. So a study done by a cardiologist on lowering cholesterol. So, and we have more information. This is sprouted barley for cholesterol, Parkinson's disease. There's been limited research on fava bean sprouts. We want to see more. Pancreatic cancer, a lot of research uh, they're mostly um, with um, uh, the brassica family. Um, broccoli sprouts, again, uh, a cancer. A major inducer of anti-carcinogenic protective enzymes from broccoli. We're protecting ourselves against cancer by eating broccoli sprouts. Bladder cancer, um, Cardiovascular disease. Uh, this, all this is university research. This is real stuff here. Prostate cancer, skin cancer, and wheatgrass. As I mentioned earlier, the first green vegetable on the planet. But wheatgrass is real medicine. It's great stuff. It works because. It cleanses the bloodstream. It uh, detoxifies the liver. It uh, purges the intestinal tract. Um, it, uh, it is a powerful growth hormone and blood purifier. I mean, if you start to purify your blood and detoxify your liver and clean your, uh, your intestinal tract, you're going to get better. And this is a powerful natural food that'll go a long 
way in that direction. And look at the nutrition in it. This comes from my book, Sprouts and Miracle Food, so you don't have to copy all of these numbers. Um, but how it compares against things like spinach and broccoli and eggs, really, some of our finest foods. And um, it's a known anti-mutagen, and there is, uh, it's quite strong at a reasonably low level. Very powerful uh, stuff. Back in the 30s, some research was done on feeding animals. And you see the animals who, the gray bar is the animals who were on a diet of our best vegetables, you know, carrots and uh, uh, broccoli and uh, cabbage. And then the gray bar starts to go down because after nine weeks on that vegetable diet, they weren't getting everything they needed. So we, they added wheatgrass back into the diet, and three weeks later, it's all the way up. The black bars are just the animals, the guinea pigs, who ate wheatgrass all along. Their health continued to climb. So there's the evidence. But on we go for more evidence and university research on and on, cellular regeneration, prevention of arteriosclerosis, uh, anti-cancer for the prostate, pancreatic uh, cancer. A lot is in my, uh, a lot of these, these research studies can be found in my book on wheatgrass. Uh, and also a lot of good information in Power Juice's super drinks. Now this is very interesting because how many of you have heard that uh, the um, the, the therapeutic agent in wheatgrass juice is chlorophyll. Have you heard that? Right. It was actually a quote from uh, Dr. Ann Wigmore. I don't know if it actually came from her lips or was just interpreted over the years, saying uh, that wheatgrass is 90% chlorophyll, and that's what makes it so potent. Right, because back to the photosynthesis and the origin of foods on the planet, sound, it sounds great. This wheatgrass product actually has, uh, is using wheatgrass and extracting the, the wheatgrass and putting it in the creams and in the sprays. Now, during that alcohol extraction process, the chlorophyll is removed, but the product still works. So we learned something else. And back in the 30s, they didn't know what it was, uh, so they called it the unknown factor, the grass factor. But nowadays, we've identified it as a growth hormone. So one of the most potent aspects of wheatgrass medicine is the growth hormone, and that's why it repairs skin cells so well. And you can see this is a before and after uh, of eczema, and this is psoriasis. And um, the next picture is even worse. You may not want to look at it. I'll go real fast. But it's leprosy, the worst skin disease of all, leprosy. And there is a before and after picture uh, that to see what this we applying the wheatgrass cream will do. And I'll just pause uh, to explain that a little bit because you're not going to want me to pause on the next picture because leprosy does not look good. But the, uh, the, the, the doctor who's behind this uh, started uh, using real wheatgrass on the skin with his patients. But it was a messy job. And a lot of his patients, the majority of his patients, couldn't get the fresh grass so easily. They, were, they had trouble growing it. Um, they you know, stained their clothing. Uh, it became hard. And so he extracted the uh, wheatgrass, just like you would extract echinacea or you would extract ginseng, uh, St. John's wort. He used it as an herbal extract, and he put that in these creams, and then it was easy to apply. So these creams represent that non-chlorophyll wheatgrass. So, hey, here's a, a quick run-through on this, on this next picture. So that is leprosy before and after. Uh, and you know, there's, some, there's healing, even with that horrible disease. And I have found that wheatgrass can even cure baldness, and I'm here to announce it tonight. Here you go. There you go. 
Oh, how I wish that worked. <laughs> All right. So, but it did, it does cure psoriasis, as I said before. And back, uh, maybe 15 years ago when I was, went off of my game, um, I got psoriasis on my skin, and there's the proof of it. And you know what they say about psoriasis. They say that it's incurable. So if you go to um, any of these um, places over here, like uh, you know, the American Academy of Dermatology, there is no cure. You know, or um, uh, the alternative treatments have not been proven. There are side effects, and we, we use steroid medications and all that stuff. Well, I just didn't accept that. And I got back on track with my program, doing everything that I'm talking with, with you about today. And, um, and it's gone. And it was all over. What you saw on my, on my face <clears throat> was all over my body. So it was hard work. And maybe that's why they say there's no cure, because most Americans aren't going to put in the hard work. They're not going to put in the effort. And, uh, but it takes hard work to heal your, yourself. And if we don't put in the effort when we're well to maintain our health and to build our health, then how can you expect to beat disease when you're sick? So let's do the hard work now and prevent disease. Prevention is easier than treatment. So, um, uh, just a, a, one of my raw food uh, menus, lots of things you can do. You know, raw soup, of course the big sprout salads, and tahini, basil dressing, this is in my cookbook. Hajiki, remember I said um, how the sea vegetables are so important. Uh, zucchini chips laid out in the dehydrator. Oh, there's all kinds of wonderful recipes. I'm sure you, you know of this. But of course, we, you know, we've got to spend more time in our kitchen. Your grandparents spent more time in their kitchen than you do. And I truly believe that one of the secrets to getting well is for us to spend more time in our kitchens working with food. And none of these fast shortcuts with prepared foods. We've got to go and make it from scratch. And the more we do that, that's an investment. It's an investment in our longevity and in the ability <clears throat> not just to live till the 80s or 90s, but to be able to walk through the gardens and smell the roses as opposed to being wheeled through the gardens in a chair. So... How do we want to end up? Let's put the investment in now. So we all want more energy. And that's, this is high energy food. So much energy, it makes you want to jump out of your skin. And that, it's not a Christmas tree. That is a single blade of wheatgrass. So that's the energy image that radiates from a living food. And this happens to be a very potent radiation because wheatgrass is a potent food. So, so that's what we want. We want to plug our bodies into that energy. That's what charges our batteries up. You all have cell phones. You plug your cell phone in every day. Let's plug our bodies in to, and recharge ourselves with the power of living foods. So, you know, I, I, we talk a lot about food, but, you know, we need to move that lymph around. The lymph is, is the waste products. Every cell in our body uh, uh, ha metabolizes. It eats its food, and it spits out and excretes, and that goes into the lymphatic system, and it has to be... Um, uh, uh, Disseminated, it has to be. It has to exit the body, otherwise it'll accumulate and reabsorb, and that cause, causes all kinds of illness. So, exercise is really important. Aerobic exercise of some kind every day is really, really important. And of course, we can't forget water 
because 67% of our body weight is fluid. And if you look at the, you know, the brain is, you know, 83% fluid and the muscles even the, the, is 75% and the, the, even bone is 22% fluid by weight. So it makes the difference between aching bones and aching joints um, could be the difference between just better hydration. You can hydrate with water. You can hydrate with juice but we don't hydrate with Coca-Cola. Coca-Cola, you know, has a saying, Coca-Cola, the real thing. Nah. Wheatgrass is the real thing. <laughs> so, and this is also part of our responsibility now because you're learning a lot, but you have to pass this information along. And we need the next generation to start uh, eating this way. And kids love sprouts because it's finger food. And it really connects them to the gardening. They can watch it grow literally in front of their eyes. That's, that's a great connection, right? Because now if a kid goes into the supermarket and you buy, um, I don't know, you know uh, hamburger meat, um, it comes in a plastic package. So there's no connection to an animal or to anything. But when the food is growing in front of their eyes, that's a strong connection. And if we instill that in children at an early age, it lasts a lifetime. That's a real gift. So grow things in your home, whether it's in the backyard garden if you've got the right season, whether it's in the kitchen garden with some of this. You know, let, let's influence them It'll, it'll pay back, it'll pay you all back, your whole family back, many times. In, in, in my household, even my dog eats sprouts. It's the, photos don't lie. This was not Photoshop. I, this is my disclaimer right now. That's it. Untreated photos. And, uh, and it does keep you young. This is me with uh, Ann Wigmore in 1979. I brought her my buckwheat sprouts. And this is when I first invented the sprout bag and uh, back in the old days. So um, going on for a long time. Let's see. So guess what? I still have time for your questions. Thank you very much for listening to my long-winded speech. <laughs>